Thanks, Valley. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another live community classroom with Michaels. Today, we have Marley from the Miley Bird with us ready for another exciting class. Today, we'll be making the simple crochet dish crawl, as she said. My name is Dillian from Yarnspirations, and I'll be helping with any questions you might have during today's class. Feel free to ask questions in the chat here, and we'll be sure that Marley answers them. And as always, while we're getting started, feel free to let us know where you're watching from. Thanks. Back to you, Marley. All right. Okay, guys. So, hey. We're going to be making a dishcloth today that is so incredibly simple in the stitched technician of it, but it's tricky because of the yarn. Now, how many of you, show of hands, have the scrubby yarn in hand? Yep, I see you. Oh, I see all of you out there. You're probably like, man, that's so cool, right? You see it on the Michael shelf. You're like, wow, how do I use this, <laughs> right? You're like, what am I supposed to do with this? They say it's for dishcloths, but man, it looks a little bit tricky. It looks a little bit like that uh like eyelash sort of yarn that we had way back in the day and you're not wrong that's very much what it is like it is made up of a chain at construction with some eyelash sort of fibers that come off that are um polyester if i do remember i don't have my label with me right here um it's not as hard to use as you might think but the trick with this yarn is it's a very simple one and i'm going to give you the little trick that i have you guys ready you literally are gonna use your fingers to feel your way to find the hole for each stitch as you go. So you are going to almost disregard your eyes and just use your fingers that, oh, there's the hole and stick your, your hook into it. Oh, there's the hole and stick your hook into it. Um, it's tricky, it's, it's, it's not for the faint of heart. I know that this pattern says it's for a beginner and it technically is the skill level that you would need to complete this pattern is really easy the tricky part is the yarn itself. So for today's lesson, what I'm going to do so that way you guys can better see my stitches on screen, I'm going to hold Lily Sugar and Cream together with my scrubby so that you can see the stitches. Now I will tell you, this is not something that I highly recommend doing because here's the reason why. The, the whole nature of the scrubby yarn is that the, the fiber it's made of is it's um, it doesn't allow the bacteria to grow like a cotton yarn does. So if you've ever made like a dishcloth and you've had it in your sink like a day and you're like, oh man, that really stinks, right? So the whole beauty of the scrubby is that it doesn't hold all that bacteria. So that's the, the reason why you'd want to use the scrubby yarn versus like a cotton yarn. Now there's also some cotton scrubby type yarn out there. Um, but if you're using the scrubby yarn purely for those properties, adding a cotton fiber to it is going to negate that, right? But if you don't mind that, if you're like, you know what, Marley, I'm okay. I wash my, my dishcloths after I do my dishes every night or whatever it is you do, then great. You could totally do what I'm doing and holding a cotton strand with your scrubby together to help you better see the stitches, maybe the first time around, and then go back later on and try the scrubby by itself. Whatever you decide to do is going to be perfectly fine. There are no crochet police out there, guys. So you do what works best for you, all right? So I have a skein of scrubby yarn. I have an eye hook and I also have a couple of stitch markers. Those of you who have taken my classes before know I love stitch markers, but I especially love the stitch markers when I'm dealing with scrubby because I cannot find those stitches. Like they're difficult to see. So I like to be sure that I have the last stitch of every row marked. So that way I, can, I know that I'm getting nice clean edges. All right, you guys all with me with this? Okay, so we're gonna go down to my hands, Nate. All right, first thing. So the scrubby, oh, I just totally, there we go. The scrubby yarn, it comes in, this is called a, a ball. Okay, this is called a ball of yarn. You could pull it from the outside or you could try and go from the inside and pull out the guts, totally up to you. For the all the different times I have used scrubby over the years, I like to pull it from the outside. Um, sometimes I'll just let it roll around on my table. Other times I have like a ball winder, just like this. I think they sell ones similar to this at Michael's and I will put it right through the center of my scrubby. So that way as I'm pulling, it just pulls it around the ball and it just makes it easy for me to use. You don't have to have one of these, but if you have one, it makes it really easy. But that's to answer the question of Marley, do I pull it from the inside or the outside? It doesn't matter, just like anything else. I like to pull it from the outside, so that's where that is. And again, I'm going to use a different color of Lily Sugar and Cream, so that way you can easily see the stitches as I'm creating them, okay? So I'm just gonna partner them up, just like always. And I'm gonna start off with a slip knot. So if you've never made a slip knot before, take your, your tail, 
put it in the palm of your hand, take your working yarn, wrap it around your forefinger and your middle finger. And when you come back up, cross it over. Rotate your hand over and you're gonna go underneath this front loop, grab the back loop and then pull it off. And you get yourself a little slip knot right there, okay? Once you have your slip knot, you're gonna place that directly onto your hook. Now, one of the tricky things about using the two different strands together for me is <laughs> it's it makes it so that I'm not just going through one space, right? I have to make sure that I have both strands together that I don't accidentally increase, but it's something that we will pay attention to. Now, just like any other crochet project, you're going to create chains. And the pattern says that we're supposed to create 27 chains. You could really do bigger or smaller, whatever floats your boat, but we're gonna go with 27. So we're gonna take our hook. I'm gonna go around my chain or my, my yarn, just like so. And then as I pull this through, notice I, I usually will grip my slip knot. So that way I kind of elongate my chain or my, uh, my loop that's on my hook and I can pull the scrubbing yarn and the other yarn underneath. Now this yarn, neither one of these has any give to it. So if you have arthritis or if you have any sort of um, tendency to struggle with yarns that don't have any give, I will give you a heads up that this yarn will be a little bit tough to work with, but you can do it. Now, typically when I hold two strands together like this, I would go up a hook size because I don't want my stitches to be as tight and dense as what they would be with just an eye hook and just the the scrubby yarn, but I'm gonna go ahead and maintain it with this eye hook. And I'm just working along creating these chains. And because I added that uh, sugar and cream, you can hopefully see those chains as they're getting created. If I had just done the chains with the scrubby, it makes it more difficult. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna drop this just for demonstration purposes. And I'm going to show you what it would look like if I was just using the scrubby, if you decided to do that. Okay. So you can see here, as I'm going along, those are my chains right there. And I'm just going along here, grabbing my yarn and pulling it through. But it looks like a hot mess, right? I mean, it, it's not a hot mess. There are chains there. It's just difficult to see. So we want to go back. I'm gonna go back and so that I have both colors on so I can make sure you see what I'm doing here. And again, I'm chaining, you can chain 27 is what the pattern calls for. You can chain any amount you really want to though. It's, uh, we're just gonna be doing half double crochets. So you can chain any number you want as wide as you want your piece to be. Can you see how these are all going here? Does it help? Is that helpful for you guys to see with the Lily Sugar and Cream? Is that helpful? Good. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you, Kelly. That's That was my goal. I wanted you to be able to see what was happening. Now, here's the tricky thing. If you're just using the scrubby, your, your chains look like this also. Okay, it's just hard to see them because you have all the eyelashes kind of coming through along with your strand that is this nice pretty chain. So what you have to do as you're going along is you have to take your yarn. It really helps if you're against a light background in my opinion. And you have to essentially use your fingers like this and kind of feel through. If you feel the tops of your chains, you even if I'm looking at them here, I can feel and be like, okay, there's a chain. All right, there's a chain, All right? There's a chain Here, where the next chain comes out of the previous chain. There's kind of, I'm gonna call it a lump, but it's not a lump. There's a little bit of a bump there that if you close your eyes and you just feel your way down the chain, you'll be able to feel each chain as it's, as it's presenting itself, okay? Um, can you please, what does that say? Can you please show the ball of yarn you're using? All right, so I'm just using, uh, a scrubby yarn and I'm using lily sugar and cream. That's what I'm using. So I have them held together. So if you're just using the scrubby yarn, what I want you to do is you have your loop on your hook and you know that there's a loop underneath your hook. Your, I use my middle finger and my thumb 
And I find I'm like, okay, I feel it. Like I have the pad of my thumb resting on the V portion. And then I pull my finger down. I'm like, okay, there's my bump. And I, I can feel that next V. So I'm like, okay, so there's my chain number two. I pull my hand down. I feel the bump. So I'm, I'm on the next one. All right, there's my chain number three. So I know I'm going to be doing a half double crochet in my third chain from hook. So I'll go ahead, yarn over my hook. And notice I haven't moved my thumb or my middle finger yet. And I will just move my thumb. So I keep my middle finger there. And I'm just gonna stick my hook right where I felt that chain. And because literally nobody is ever gonna know if you just went through the back bump, the front bump, the bottom bump, whatever it is, just stick your hook in there and grab something, all right? Go ahead and yarn over and then pull that up. So now you have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and draw through all three loops. Okay. This is where our stitch marker is gonna come into play. We know we have this loop on our hook and we know that somewhere back here, if you're just using your scrubby yarn, there's a V there. You just might not be able to see it easily, but use your stitch marker and try and put your stitch marker through that V because that V is the top of the crochet you just did. Okay. You guys with me on that? Yep, I see thumbs. Okay. This stitch marker, as I said, is the top of the half double crochet I just did. I was looking over here at the pattern to see if our initial skip two stitches count as a stitch. And it doesn't tell me if it does, but it does tell me that I have 26 stitches at the end of my row. So that indicates to me that they want the first two to count as a stitch. But here, I'm going to tell you guys this. <sighs> okay, if you want the first two to count as a stitch, where we just put our marker is the top of the stitch we just made, but then the V behind it is the stitch that they want us to be the last stitch of our row. Does that make sense? Okay, so this marker, the first one we did, that's the top of the stitch we just made. So if our initial skipped two chains didn't count as a stitch, this is where the last stitch of our row would be. If it does count as a stitch, then this is where the last stitch of our row would be. Guys, honestly, in a pattern like this, I would just make the decision on your own. I would come down the row. I'm gonna leave both of these right here. I'm gonna come down the row when I get to this stitch, I'll work it and I'm going to look at my work and be like, does that look good? And I'll say, yep. And then I will continue on just making it so that my turning two chains won't count as a stitch. If you wanted to follow, if you want to follow the pattern to a T, then I know in the second row, it does say that the chain two counts as a double crochet from here on out. So technically, I think that this here, the second stitch marker I added, that's supposed to be the end of the row. So it'd be the second uh, v from your hook. Does that make sense? I'm going to leave them both there. We'll look at, we'll look at it as we, as we come back. All right. As we're going across here, once again, if you're just using scrubby, seeing these V's like this is very difficult to do. So again, we're going to use our fingers. So find the chain you just worked into, feel it, find where that bump is, feel where the V is for the next chain up. Oh, you see it yarn over your hook go into that V, just grab something, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through all three loops on your hook. So quite honestly, guys, if you're just using the scrubby, it's all about the feel. You have to feel your stitches because it's really difficult to see. So once again, find where you just made your stitch, feel your way so that you can feel the next chain. You're like, oh, there it is. Kind of, I move my thumb, I keep my middle finger underneath it so I can get into it, make sure I'm in it. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through all three. Now, here's one of the cool things about working with this yarn. <laughs> if you guys ever accidentally skip a chain, nobody's gonna know. Like your work is hidden. This is like, what is it? You know, what's the, there's like some phrase of something, something amongst the weeds or something. This is, I mean, this is like finding a needle in a haystack, right? It's just, you're not going to look for it. And if somebody is looking that close to your dishes, I really hope, 
or your dishcloth. I hope they're doing your dishes like for real. Okay. I'm just going to keep working these half double crochets all the way down my row and keep using your fingers to feel your way. It gets easier and I use that term really lightly, but it does get easier past the foundation chain row like this. I mean, as crocheters, we all know that the foundation chain row is really the hardest row to get into no matter what, whether you're using scrubby or not. But with scrubby, you just get that little bit of an added challenge. Finding the place that you're gonna put your hook in past this row when you're using just the scrubby is going to be a little bit easier. I don't even know if I did 27, y'all. I just did enough. I'm just going to keep going. I see a lot of you focusing really hard on this. I know this is not easy. And I, I mean, just heads up, y'all. If you're a crocheter who's been crocheting a long time, you're like, I just can't get this. I, I hear you. You are perfectly valid. You are still a wonderful crocheter. Don't give up on the skill. Don't give up on the yarn. It just takes a little bit of practice because it's a little bit different. We are so not relying on our eyes to be able to see the stitches. We have to rely on our fingertips. At least that's that's been my experience with it. Um, I was lucky enough that when Scrubby first came out, I was the spokesperson for Red Heart Yarn. So I was one of the first people to actually use Scrubby before it hit the market. And I was, <laughs> I was sitting there at the Red Heart offices, you guys, having a discussion with the team of what, what or how is the best way for me to demonstrate how to use this. Because for me, using it was very much, I have to use my fingertips. And how do you demonstrate that on video? Like that's a very difficult thing to do when I'm just using the scrubby, you know, because you can't see it. You're not there with your fingertips on my, on my yarn. So this is the best way I think for me to demonstrate it. So that way you have the blue yarn to at least see where I'm trying to go or not trying, but where I am going. And then hopefully you are working with your own piece and you are able to feel your way down the row to see how this works. And it does get easier after the first row. And because I know some people probably are going to ask, because I've had people ask me, would it be easier to start off with a foundation half double crochet row? Um, you could do that, but you're still going to run the same um, trouble or have the same issue of trying to find where that initial chain is of a foundation half double crochet row. So you still have the same sort of issue. Um, not to mention, if you start off with a foundation half double crochet row, your bottom part is really going to stretch a lot. And when you're working with dishcloths, you kind of want them to be a nice kind of dense fabric, at least, I mean, well, with the scrubby, it's not really super dense, but you know what I mean? You don't want a lot of extra give and willingness to it. Kelly, you're working really hard over there, girlfriend. It looks good. I see all of you out there working. Good job, Gloria. Good job, Kim. Good job, Joanne. <laughs> you're all over that. <laughs> this is great. You guys are looking good. Awesome. So we got through the first row. I know it's tricky, you guys. Um, if you if you are still stuck kind of back here, don't give up. I mean, pause the video, watch it on replay, um, and then you know get caught up and then you'll see where row two is. Because row two, that's all you're gonna do for the rest of the dishcloth, okay? So once we get through this, we move on to row two, which is a lot easier, all right? So if we're looking at the pattern, again, it tells us row two, it says to chain two, and turn. And it tells us that the initial chain two is going to count as a half double crochet. So when we chain our two, I'm going to put a marker into the V behind the loop on my hook. And that's going to indicate the last stitch of the row. And then we're going to half double crochet in each of the stitches all the way down. Okay. And once again, we're going to feel, but it's going to be easier because Instead of feeling for this little tiny chain, we have these big gaps between these posts. So as you're feeling down the road to see where you're going to crochet, you're going to be able to find each post this time. You see the post, you're going to be able to feel like, oh, there's a post, oh, there's a post, oh, there's a post. And you just go into the V right above the post. It becomes a lot easier to do. All right, so I'm going to pick up my work. Let me get myself some yarn here. And I'm going to chain two. So I start off by chaining two. So there's one and two, and then I turn. 
you have this right here. There's my loop on my hook. There's the V behind the loop on my hook. So I'm gonna put my marker there. Now I have a place knowing, or I, I know exactly where the end of my row three is gonna be. It's gonna be in that last stitch. Just like we marked down here, remember? I marked both of them and we're gonna take a look. All right, knowing that this chain two now counts as a stitch, that is very important because now I know I'm not gonna put a stitch right there into that first V, okay? So this last half double crochet I did, there's the post of it. And if I were to go straight up from that post, that's where those chain twos are. So what I wanna do is I find that post and then I find the next post because it's the next post I wanna go above. And I wanna make sure I'm putting it into the hole that's to the right of the post. It's to the, or I'm sorry, the left of the post. I know my directions. I was about to say, if you're right-handed, you put it in the hole to the left of the post. If you're left-handed, you're going to put it in the hole to the right of the post. Okay. Here's the first half double crochet, or the, this is the last half double crochet we did on the previous row. Here's our chain two. So this is the post of the last half double crochet we did. There's the hole where you would put a stitch, but we are not because this chain two counts as a stitch. So I find the next post, so I have my hands on it and I'm gonna put it into the hole to the left of that post. So I yarn over my hook, find that hole, stick it in, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through two. You guys see that? Does that make sense to everybody? This, I mean, this is basic, this is basic crocheting. Okay. So I'm gonna yarn over my hook, essentially find my next post, Find the hole above and to the left of my post because I'm right-handed. Insert my hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, draw through all three. And I'm gonna do this all the way down my row. And again, you guys are really going to use your fingers. This is a very tactile yarn as far as using your fingers to know where things are. Another thing here, guys, this is something that I'm experiencing right now. When you're pulling up the yarn through, sometimes it might be that you will um, feel like you have the yarn, but maybe you're just grabbing one of the eyelashes. Make sure you have the core of the yarn, that chainette core, all right? Make sure you have the core of the yarn as you're pulling through. And when you're pulling through with two yarns, if you're holding two yarns like this, your hook, depending on how pointy the hook portion of your hook is, um, you could snag one of the other yarns. So be very careful about that. It's one of those little things you just have to be careful with. Lillian, I'm gonna ask you how everybody's doing as I'm just half double crocheting all the way down this row. Kind of see, I see a lot of stuff popping up on my screen but I can't read it because I'm trying not to get distracted <laughs> and accidentally do a double crochet. I feel you. Uh, yeah, we are doing great. Uh, we don't have any major questions that need to be addressed, so I think we're good. Um, a few people are finding it a little bit hard to follow along, but are happy to watch the recording later. Um, so yeah, some of us are just sitting back and watching today because yeah, using the two strands together is definitely a new challenge. It, it is. It's tricky. Um, but do you agree, Lillian? I mean, I think it shows up better on film. It's easier to see than yeah, if I, I agree. was just using the scrubby. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, this the scrubby by itself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's definitely easier to see with the bright blue color as well. Yeah. Okay, good. I think I think that's good. Awesome. Victoria agrees with you. She says that having the two yarns together is helpful. Yay. I, I think so too. Yeah. I mean, the thing here is that, yeah, oh, you guys see what I just did there? I pulled up, but I only see my blue there. So I know I left the other one hanging out. So I gotta undo this. Um one thing about seeing it this way is, yeah, we're just doing half double crochets. It's a pretty, I mean, it's a pretty generic, basic beginner sort of stitch. But like we've said all along, this scrubby yarn is what makes it like super unique. Now, as I'm coming down here, guys, remember I have the two markers. The one on the inside, the one closest to my hook, that's the one that's on top of the very first half double crochet I did. The second one, that's the one that's in the top of the, the chain, the skipped chains that I did. 
So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put one into the first hook or the first stitch marker. And I'm going to take that out of C. So as I'm looking here, the first thing I could do is if you weren't certain if that counted as a stitch or not, you could go back and count your stitches that you've made. And again, some people like to count at the top if you're working on a normal crochet. When you're working with this and you're working with scrubby, I always use my fingers and I count my posts. And don't forget that that initial chain two counts as a stitch, right? So you would count, you would start there and then use your fingers to count your post all the way down. If you got all the way down to there and you already had 26, you could be like, oh, okay, I don't have to count that one. At the same time, guys, it's just half double crochets. Go ahead and put it into that last stitch. And here's my reasoning why, even though it doesn't say so in the pattern, the, the stitch numbers indicate that that should count as a stitch. But also the fact that this initial chain two down here counts as a stitch, that leads me to believe that they want you to count this as a stitch also. So I would go ahead, yarn over my hook, and then go into that chain down there any way you possibly can and do your half double crochet. Take off your marker. And here's what I have. So I know that on my next row, I will chain two and turn because it's going to be a repeat of this row. So I'll chain two and turn. My chain two will count as a stitch. So as I work all the way down, my very last stitch is going to be worked into that the chain two that I started with on row two. So that's how these stitch markers will really help you. Okay. How we feeling so far? I see a lot of you working on it and there's a lot of concentration happening, which is fantastic. Okay, I'm going to take a drink of water real quick. Awesome, awesome. All right, I'm just going to keep on going. You guys go ahead and type anything in the chat if you're watching this live, if you have a question regarding the pattern or maybe maybe you have something that you want to add to the conversation that you think would be helpful for others, let us know. Here at the start, notice I chained two. I put a marker into the second chain I created. So it's the first chain behind the loop on my hook. That chain two counts as the stitch that would have been to the left of my post right there, right? That was the last half double crochet I did. And I would put a stitch, my first stitch would typically go into that hole right there to the left of my post. But this stitch counts as a stitch that would be there. So I'm going to put my first stitch to the left of my second post right there. And I don't know about you, Lillian, but I'm going to tell you my pink nails are rocking for this. <laughs> they are really pointing out something fierce. <laughs> I'm loving it, Maui. Oh, it's really awesome. <laughs> I am going on vacation, guys. So I went with bright pink and I was like, well, hopefully people will understand, but I feel like they are great as pointers. <laughs> All right, um, I do want to tell you guys, so we're working with half double crochets for this particular um, dishcloth, right? Uh, because it's a really good basic stitch. I love half double crochets, but say you wanted to do this with double crochets. You absolutely could. What you would need to do in order to change the pattern is instead of working into the third chain from hook, you would work in the fourth chain from hook. And then you would just continue on with double crochets. And then when you chained to turn, you would chain three instead of chain two. Um, you could start with the same chain amount if you wanted, but remember that that will drop your stitch count a little bit lower. So you would have to increase your stitch count at least by one uh, if you wanted to have the same stitch count. But basically, that's all you would do if you wanted to do double crochets instead of half doubles. Or if you wanted to combine and do half doubles and doubles. I mean, there's lots of combinations. This is really as, as generic as you possibly can get. And these dishcloths are really great to make not only for your dishes, but they make great um, just, you know, bath time pal friends and stuff. I know that there are some patterns on the, on the Red Heart uh, or Yarnspirations website where there, um, there are puppets, like shark puppets you can do. Um, I know I made a ghost. Uh, what else have I done? I can't remember. 
Um, I've done so many videos for this scrubby yarn and demonstrations for how to use it with different patterns. There's just a lot of fun things you can do. A lot of great colors. This makes a really great spa gift. Partner it up with some really great soap. I know at Michael's, they have the ingredients. If you wanted to learn how to make soap, you could you know, get, get really crafty, make some soap and then make yourself a scrubby and get, get a really great gift out there. There's so much fun you could do. All right, so I'm to the end of my row. I find my marker and it's actually easier for me to get into that chain if I don't have my marker in it. So I just make sure I take my marker out, find my chain. Here's a little tip guys. Sometimes I'll use the hook of my, like the hooky part of my hook and use it to kind of force myself get into the chain to make sure it gets in there. There you go. And there we are. Do you see that? I'm just gonna keep on going. Now, I didn't crochet over my tail with the scrubby yarn. I probably could have. Um, the other thing is, say you were just using the scrubby yarn, you can weave it down a little bit and weave it back. And because this yarn is so um, durable, I actually put a couple knots in it. And I never put knots in my crochet, you guys, like ever, ever, ever. But I do with the scrubby because it's so thin and it just sticks into place and I don't have any issues with it. So I don't stress too much about my, my own um, weaving technicalities when it comes to this yarn. It's so fun. All right, so I've chained two, I've put my marker in place. I know I'm not going to that first, first stitch there. I go to the second and I keep going. Can I put Lillian, a couple of questions? Ahead. Oh, yeah. great minds think alike, don't they? <laughs> Um, we had a question here from Joanne. She was asking which uh, size crochet hook you would recommend for holding the two yarns together. Okay, so I am using an eye hook right now and my fabric is really dense, which is not bad. It's, it's not bad. But if I had my druthers, I would probably go up to the K hook. I think this is a K. Um, yeah, a K hook, like a 10 and a half or a six and a half millimeter. So it's a US 10 and a half or a six and a half millimeter. Like I think I would prefer this hook size over the eye, which is a five and a half millimeter um, for holding the two yarns. I think that I would like the fabric better, um, but I mean, really it's a personal preference thing, I think. But I think I would prefer a K hook if I were using the two yarns together. I mean, this, this works. This is very dense. Like, like this is very, very dense. You all know what I'm talking about. I mean, the first first crochet piece you ever made, it was probably like super duper dense. You were like, man, that could be like Kevlar because <laughs> that's what we do. <laughs> Mine was that way. I have no shame. That's what it was like. It was super dense. Sometimes yeah, Kim says she agrees. Um, sometimes that's what you want, right? Sometimes you want things really tight and dense and sometimes you want a little bit more airy. It all, I mean, it all depends on what, what look you're going for. While we are kind of on the subject of crochet hooks, yes, Victoria said yours is very pretty and I wondered if you could tell us about it. Um, this is a hook by Leather and Company, L-I-E-T-H-E-R. Um, she has a website and an Etsy shop. Uh, if you guys have been following me a while, you know that I, I crochet a lot and I tend to get cramps in my hands quite a bit. And so I tend to go for hooks that have nice big handles for me because obviously I, I hold my hook like a pencil. Like I don't hold it like my friends who hold it like this. Um, so for that reason, like the furls hooks that are out there, they kind of look like this. They don't, they don't feel right in my hands. Like when I'm holding them here, it feels like my hands are always slipping down to here. So these are difficult for me to use. My friends who hold their hooks like this and twirl, they are great at that but I don't know, it doesn't really work for me. So I like these ones. I've had these before um, and they're nice. I like to hold them and they have a nice big handle for me, but I've gradually gone to these and you guys have probably seen these. And these ones are by um, Touche Crochet, uh, T-O-O -O Crochet, Touche 
T-O-O-S-H-A-Y crochet. Um, and again, it's just a nice big grip and my hand doesn't cramp up on me. So there's still Susan Bates hooks. You can see there's Susan Bates hooks. They're just big handles. The difference between these two, the biggest difference for me, this one here, the handle, like I still have the thumb down here and you'll notice as I'm crocheting, most of the time I usually have my, my middle finger down here on the thumb and I'll just kind of pull up on it. Uh, and that's okay. And this part is a little bit narrow for me. Um, so most of the time when I'm just crocheting on my own, I like these really big ones. Like my hand does not cramp at all. I don't have the thumb down here, but I have this area that I can rest, rest my finger and it just feels really good. So that's a very long winded answer to say they are Susan Bates hooks with a specially created handle that I find allows me to crochet longer hours as this is my full-time job. Um, and yeah, so those are my hooks <laughs> and they're fun. They are, we have a lot of different ones. This is a lethal one also. Obviously it's a different type of wood and this one's great too. Like it feels good in my hands. So there you go. Here, I'll just change hooks right now. Why not? And I'll go with this one. Like my hand already feels better with the bigger hook like this. And I don't have arthritis yet, but it just feels better. I don't know, anybody else feel that way? I think I saw a question, somebody was asking me if I am going under both loops or one loop. I'm going under both loops, but honestly, if you're just using the scrubby yarn, get under whatever you can. If you can only get one loop, then get one loop. But I prefer going underneath both loops, okay? I know somebody asked that question. All right. Did I answer the, the hook question enough? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Everybody asks me about my hooks and I always feel so bad because I know that, you know, I know they don't sell them at the store. They sell the, the hook part at the store, but I just can't crochet with just the plain hook anymore. It makes my hand cramp so bad, especially when I'm using yarn like this that doesn't have any give to it. Oh my gosh. It's just not, it's not a good thing. Yeah, I think everyone really needs to find just what works for them, don't they? Yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, I have a friend that she loves the clover hooks that you can find at Michael's. Um, and those just don't work for me, but she loves them. And I have another friend that she uses, uh, I think it's the loop and threads version, and she thinks they're spectacular. And I'm just like, that's great. Whatever tool helps you get the job done, that's the tool you should use. I want to ask another question about keeping your edges straight. Sure. Do you have any hot tips? This is my hot tip. Just the, the marker, making sure that your marker is in place. And then the other thing is as you're crocheting along, as you get more and more comfortable, you will tend to start crocheting tighter on the top on the, as the rows go on. Like you'll notice these down here are a little bit more loose. So as you get more comfortable, these tend to get a little bit tighter and that's because as you're crocheting, you are not letting this loop here that's on your hook like come out to its full potential. Um, so what happens is you shorten it up before you start your next stitch. And so what that does is it shortens the row overall. So one thing you can do besides just using these is if you wanna make sure your next stitch is the correct size, if you take your hook with the loop on your hook and you like bring it this would be parallel, It'll be vertical to where, where your stitch is going to be. So you bring your hook over to where your stitch is going to be. And if you make sure that that loop on your hook is literally the same size, like in width as the stitch that below it, then you know that that's the correct size. Yarn over your hook, yarn over, pull up, yarn over, pull through. The other thing is as you're cr creating these stitches and you're keeping this loop the same size as your hook throughout, it will keep things really nice and consistent and you won't have things get too tight up here versus down here. Um, if you're crocheting and maybe you are really tense and anxious for one reason or another, you can accidentally start to crochet too tight and that can alter your edges. It can make your edges pull in. Um, so doing this little trick where you take your hook and just make sure that you know this, this loop on your hook, it's about the same width of where you're getting to put your hook for the next stitch, it helps out immensely. And then using these markers to mark the last stitch of your rows 
helps out, okay? So that's a great way to do it. The other thing is because we are counting these chain twos as stitches, we technically are getting a little gap between um, like our chain two and where our first stitch is because that's where our chain two would typically, not our chain two, because our chain two is taking the place of the stitch that would go there, we're getting a little tiny gap, which is hard to notice. But I mean, if you put your finger in it, you can definitely notice it. So one thing you could do if you wanted to is in the first stitch, let me mark this one so I have it marked. Otherwise I will forget. What you could do is you could create a, a, a half double crochet two together. So you yarn over your hook. You could go into this first one where you're not supposed to. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over your hook, go into the next one that you're supposed to. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, draw through all of them. It's a little tricky. And what that's gonna do is it fills up that, that hole there, right? But it gives you this sort of big half double crochet two together, but it results in one stitch up top. So if you really hate that, you could do that. The other thing you could do is in, just go rogue from the pattern. And instead of counting that chain two as your first stitch, you could say, nope, that's just going to be an extra stitch out there and go ahead and just start right here. The other thing you could do is you could do like a stacked stitch, like a stack double or half double crochet. Um, it's actually, it would be a stack double crochet, but that's a little tricky with the, the scrubby yarn. So I'm not going to show you how to do that, but it's a really great technique to show if you're doing just double crochets. Um, I have a whole video for it. Look up stacked double crochet by Marley Bird. Um, it's a stitch that I'm not going to say I invented, but I am going to say that one day I was crocheting and I was like, well, I wonder what would happen if I did this. And so I call it a stack double crochet even though it looks like two single crochets stacked on top of each other, but I call it a stack double because if you just have two, then you have a double crochet. If you were to add three on top of each other, you'd have a treble. If you had four, you'd have a, a, a double treble, so on and so forth. So distinct to distinguish what the stitch is supposed to represent, that's why I called it a stack double instead of just stacked single crochets, which is essentially what they are. And that'll all make sense to you if you watch the video. <laughs> like, I know that's just a whole lot just coming at you. But so there's a bunch of different ways right there. Did that all make sense, Lillian? I mean, it makes sense in my head, but sometimes I don't know what I'm saying makes sense. <laughs> it made sense. It's just okay. a lot of information. It was a lot of information. <laughs> you asked. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm just going on. Have you guys noticed that I'm getting stripes? Because I'm using scrubby stripes. So I'm getting some really cool striping effect without having to do a whole lot of work. Could you put a border? You could put a border around it if you wanted to. Um, once again, it would be all about just kind of feeling your way and, and putting stitches around it. Um, you could just do a single crochet border to help, you know, with the holes. Uh, I think you would still get a little bit of a hole uh, showing up. It would all depend. Um, on what stitch pattern you're using. But the great thing about the scrubby yarn itself is because of the eyelash nature of it, it really hides all those holes. Now, here's another good thing, guys. If you happen to be by crafty where you're a knitter and a crocheter, the scrubby yarn is very easy to knit with. So if you're by crafty, you're like, I don't know if I wanna crochet with it or knit with it. I find the scrubby yarn very easy to knit with. It's very easy. You just, you know, go along and you find the stitch because it's the next one in line on the needle. You don't have to find where to put your hook or anything because it's already on your needle and you just go with it. So if you are by crafty or if you are interested in learning how to knit, I have lots of wonderful learn to knit videos that I've done here for Michael's. I have videos I have on my own channel. Um, I have videos that are specific for crocheters learning to knit. And it's called the Bicrafty crafty boot camp and where we just we use a lot of terminology so that crocheters understand exactly what they're doing um but so there's there's that information just kind of going along here just like any other crochet project when you finish this off you finish it off just by working all the way to the end and you're going to cut your yarn and just pull it and then weave in your ends 
for this yarn, you can throw it in the, the washing machine. I don't know if it's recommended for the dryer, but I will tell you guys, don't tell, don't tell your inspirations, but I've totally put it in the dryer and it's come out just fine um, for me, but I don't know if it's recommended. So I'm not going to officially recommend that, but um, I can recommend it on our gear do? label. We've got uh, machine okay. wash and dry. Yep. There you go. There you go. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty easy. And like I said, guys, the beauty part of the, the scrubby yarn, this part right here is it resists bacteria. So it doesn't get all stinky as quickly as like the cotton yarn does when you're using the cotton yarn for dishcloths. Not that it's bad, not that dish, cotton dishcloths are bad. They aren't, I love them myself. I'm just saying, if you wanna use the scrubby yarn for the properties that, were, that the, the yarn was designed for, you would not wanna use a, um, a uh, strand of cotton yarn with your scrubby. But then, I mean, Lillian, there's yarn out there that's already designed with the scrubby and the cotton together too. So it all depends on what people are going for. That's right, each to their own. That's right, that is right. I know the first time I brought this home, my kids thought it was the coolest thing. Like they were so happy. Um, I brought it home, I did a video and I think I did, gosh, I'm trying, I think I did like Santa's, Santa's glove, like a Santa mitt. So it's like you had a mitt that you could wash things with, you know, and my kids thought that it was just so fantastic. And I made um, some other scrubby ornaments type items that my mom took them. I mean, they're fun. They're fun things to make. They're easy to make. It's a fun yarn to use once you get used to it. The first row is really a pain in the rear, but hey, Anything worth doing usually is a pain in the rear when you first start. <laughs> At least that's been my experience. Um, but yeah, this is this is how this looks. It's pretty cool. So I do want to show you guys. If you use a bent tip tapestry needle, I really do like these metal ones. I know that there are plastic ones out there on the market, but I will tell you guys these metal uh, yarn needles with the bent tip are really great to use when you're weaving in ends. They make things so much easier, but really I'm just gonna take this time right here and I'm just gonna just pop through these stitches, come down some, and then I'm gonna pop it back this way. And when I come back up here, I'm just gonna tie a little bit of a knot. And then I'm gonna show you another little thing real quick that I recommend doing on yours if you make one of these. But down here, I just kind of pop up in the corner. I literally just tie a knot. And I would call that good. <laughs> like that would be fine for me. Um, the other thing, and this is not written in the pattern, but when you get your piece as big as you want it to be, I would add yourself a little tiny like hanger hook, a hanger thing here. And it would be as simple as on, on your last row you would do. What I would do is I would just chain several. You don't have to go back on it or anything like that. I would just chain however many you want and kind of just test it. Be like, is that how big you want your, your hanger bit? Do you want a little bit bigger than that? Like that works for me. And then on this particular one, I would make it to where this does not count as a stitch. And then I would come and I'd make my, my first stitch. This would be on my very last row. I would make this hang out just like that on purpose. And then on this last row, instead of having my second chain from hook count as a stitch, I would not have it count as a stitch. And I would just create my half double crochet right here. And so then this big loop right here, you know, you can hang it from your, your faucet or whatever. Um, yeah, you don't have to do it like that. You could join it with a slip stitch there and do whatever you want. You could do whatever you want, but I, I prefer that. Um, and just keep going. It just makes it super easy. I mean, who doesn't love a little hook for their dishcloth? I do, I think they're great. And then, then you have a little bit of hook there and just keep going. Is that love cool? that, Molly. Is so that cool. good? I mean, am I right? <laughs> Kim says yes. She says yes. Victoria also says thank you for the yeah, ideas and tips. That's, it's great. It's great. Um, let's see here. I can't think of anything else. Can you think of anything else, Lillian? Uh, there is a question here from Victoria. She asked, have you used the scrubby yarn for other patterns uh, or crochet projects? 
So I have used it for, there is a back scrubber pattern on uh, yarnspirations.com that I did for, I actually made one for my son because he asked for one. Um, and it's, it's sort of like this guys, it's just really long and it, it kind of has this loop, but there are bigger loops on the side. So you can hang on to them and just scrub your back. Right. Um, so I've made that I've made the lot of mitten things for kids for like bath time, like fun bath time. Um, I've made, uh, I'm going to call it a soap cozy where you make something like this. And when you fold it over, you just stitch two of the sides. So that way you can put some soap inside. Um, and then I can't remember, I don't think I stitched that side. I think I left it open so that way they can replace the soap. But then, you know, it's like soap dope. Isn't that what it was called? <laughs> Am I totally aging myself? Like, come on, Nate, help me out here. You know what I'm talking about? He doesn't know what I'm talking about. Somebody help me out. Like you guys know what I'm talking <laughs> about, right? I know what you're talking about with like putting the soap in it, but I've never heard soap dope before. I mean, come on, there has to be soap. <laughs> soap on a rope, Julia says. Oh, I've heard, I've heard soap, this. Yes, 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 yes. Soap on a rope. I've heard yes. like soap, soap dope. I don't Definitely. know. Definitely. <laughs> soap on a rope. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's what my dad called it. I don't know. But yeah, it's like it's like that. So you could make that, dude. You could totally use this sort of idea with the chain. And maybe you make this long chain so you can hang it over your neck, Nate. There you go. <laughs> but so I've done things like that. Um gosh, what else have I used a scrubby for? I can't think. There are so many different wonderful patterns on yarnspirations.com for it. I even have one for like a cherry pie that I made one for it with a, like, it looks like a cherry pie. Um, I've made an ice cream cone. I mean, just fun little things and using the stuff, um, using my dishcloth with when it's just made out of scrubby guys, like I love it. Cause I can fold it up. Like, okay, first off I make my dishcloth really big. Like if you guys probably can't, I have really big hands. Like very like I have eight inch circumference hands. I've got very big hands, right? So I don't want a dishcloth that's like this size, right? Like what am I gonna do with that? I want I want to grip that thing. So I make really big dishcloths that I can then fold over and really scrub at stuff. And I love my scrubby dishcloths. I think they're great. Um and they last a good amount of time, you know, and just like any dishcloth, I mean once it's used up and once it looks all dingy and gross, I just throw it out and make another one. Um because it's that easy. It's just fun to do. I like them. It's good. Let's see here. Oh, thank you, Lillian. Lillian put a link in the chat, you guys. It says, look here for the free scrubby patterns. You can totally check those out. And when you make those, will you guys be sure to share with us on social media? I mean, I know you guys probably hear that all the time, but for real, for me personally, I'll speak to you guys personally. Like when I see that you guys are making something that I taught you how to make on social media and you tag me in it, I get super excited about it. So please be sure to share, um, share with us, just tag us. Like, so I'm the Marley bird on Instagram. You could always use hashtag, um, yarnspirations. You could use hashtag, make it with Michaels. Um, you know, all of that stuff. It's just a lot of fun. So when you get to the end down here, I'm just going to go ahead and finish this. I'm just going to I would chain one, make sure I have a long enough tail so I can get it tucked in. Obviously I would make my dishcloth larger guys if this was one I wanted to make full size for me, but I already did my chains over here, so why not? And then that's already nice and snug, but this is where I would go ahead and take these and weave them in once again, just to make sure they're in there pretty well. So I just go through and when you're using just the scrubby, this will go really easy and through those. The hardest part will just be making sure you don't just snag one of the eyelash bits. So I get pull through once, pull through the next way and come back. And then over here, I just do a little knot once again. You don't have to do a knot. You don't have to. I'm not usually, I actually guys, I never put knots in my stuff. And I never crochet over my ends and all of that stuff. Like I'm not a fan of that, but when it comes to the scrubby yarn, I find that it's really not that big of a deal. So I'll just put a knot in it and it holds really well. Snip it and you have yourself a nice little thing here. Now this does not work as a hot pad, so don't do that because it'll all melt, but it's a good little scrubber. And this thing is super dense, y'all, if you can tell. All right. There you go. Oh, look at that. Debbie's doing great. Kelly, you look like you're on your way. It's looking good. Kim, look at you. Oh, that's fantastic. Mary's trying. She's working real hard there. 
Okay, I can't tell if it's Asia Gurney or how that works, but you guys are doing great. Oh, look at you. That looks awesome. I love the multicolors. Michelle, good job. Good job, you guys. Oh, Gloria. Gloria has the sparkle. She went sparkle scrubby. I love you. I love me some sparkle, Gloria. Is that what yours is, Kim? Is it sparkle? Looks like it's sparkle. Oh, I love it. I love it. The blue and the yellow. It's so pretty. You guys are doing great. They're awesome. Well, Lillian, I think we have some scrubby yarn converts here. I'm <laughs> so glad sure. to hear it. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, that's it for me, Lillian, if you want to take it away. Thanks, Mally. Thanks for joining us today for this live community classroom with Michaels. And don't forget to share your work with hashtag make it with Michaels and hashtag Inspirations. Uh, and send it through to Mally Bird as well. And just a reminder that you can find more classes on michaels.com and the recording of today's class at michaels.com slash classes. Thanks everyone. And thanks so much, Mally. You're welcome. Good job, you guys. <laughs> Bye, Nate. <laughs>